The Book of Remembrance of Enoch, Chapter 3, Tablet of Seth, The Story of Yatsikad and Hava. An account of the first use of the Urim when Enoch saw the origins of wickedness and of the two religions. And it came to pass that Enoch and his mother slowly made their way back toward Anaway, amidst the seas of grass of the land of Anak. Now the Lord had instructed Baraka that Enoch should take the Urim unto his bosom, and because of this she prepared for him a pocket, reference number 38, the original breast piece, that would allow him to carry it under his garments over his heart, and as they went, only God knew the meaning of that which was about to take place in the lives of men upon the earth, because Enoch now possessed the Urim. And the wicked together with their one-third of those who fell from heaven knew nothing of the meaning of it, and none among the Erico de Shoy could comprehend the forces of truth that would be sent forth by the stones of Ebedel. And the righteous and even the earth saw this day to be a day like all others, but with this lad and his Urim would go the course of all mankind. And soon the Erko de Shoy would come to know that great changes were afoot among all the objects of creation, and the watchers of heaven themselves would see changes and division come upon them. And it shall be seen that even the Lord God, as he is subject to the effects of the agency of man in his experience of joy or sorrow, would in the end be influenced by the stones of Ebedel called Urim that were being carried in the bosom of his little son, Enoch. And when they arrived home, they found Mahuya fasting in prayer for their safe return. And the Lord had given him a dream of instruction with regard to the use of discretion with the truth. And they told no man of the events which transpired in obtaining the Urim. Neither did they talk of the Urim and the instructions of the Lord concerning it, openly among their fellows, and Enoch contemplated all these things in his heart. And it came to pass that the life of Enoch was blessed by his parents, and their effects in his life were complete, and he received full benefit from both a mother and a father, for Mahuya taught Enoch to love the Urkota Shore, and all the hosts of living souls, which God had created upon the earth among both man and the watchers. And Baraka taught Enoch to love the Lord God with all of his heart and soul. And Mohuya taught him the use of the element of righteousness and all the precautions and the care needed to walk in holiness of heart before God in the midst of the earth. And Baraka taught him to listen, to find the meaning of the presence of life that is in each and everything in creation together with God and man. And by these things the Lord brought Enoch the gift of discerning of spirits. And it came to pass that Enoch grew in his stature before God and man. And he was a goodly young man, and he was filled with devotion to God. And he sought earnestly to accomplish all things concerning the will of God for him. And it came to pass that by the hand of his mother, Enoch learned how to worship the living God and from her soul issued forth principles of worship for the righteous that will always be found upon the earth among every generation of the righteous. And it was commonly said of him by his fellows that all creation will give heed and pay attention to the petitions of Enoch. And also the righteousness of Enoch abounded because Mahuya, his father, was skilled in it more than any man since Yatsikad and the habits of the solitude of Mahuya, that once were a part of his sin, became of great value to Enoch as he made his way in discovering how to choose the ways of God. And like his father, Enoch began to be viewed as a wild man by those who did not know him. And it came to be seen that it was the disdain his father had for the modern ways of his fellows that compelled him to be so intent upon the ways of the hunt. But Mahuya repented and followed the desires of the Lord for him, and he gave up his own desires for those of God. And it came to pass that Enoch prepared himself with all diligence to use the urn, and the space of four years went by in his preparations, and he would look with urn from time to time and receive instructions from the Lord in the use of it. And in his preparations, Enoch had been instructed that when using the urn, 
he was to see that he must not touch the urn, for nothing could touch it that had sin, but it had to be held by something that only felt perfection for it to work as the Lord intended. And Enoch knew that the ur Shoy had no sin, and one of them could hold it for him, so he determined that he would place the urn upon a staff of an almond tree, and the almond tree is given life by the spirit of the presence of Messiah, which feels being ever watchful for the things of God. Reference number 3-9. Strong's number 8247 and number 8245. And the Lord told him it would be best if he would fasten it upon a staff with a twisted reed called the Ara reed, which is known as papyrus, and it is given life by the presence of Messiah that feels discovering the truth and to make it bear before you. Reference number four zero. Strong's number six one six nine from number six one six eight. And these things are very powerful elements of righteousness before the God of heaven. And thus when all things were in order and the Lord was telling him to go and see, Enoch went and received the blessing of his father before the light of day. And he went alone to his place of prayer on the land in the brook of Anaway. And it was on the day of the new year, but Enoch knew it not. And he took the urim and his staff of almond wood, which was to be his thummim. And it was the first thummim upon the earth. And it is the wood from which all thummim have been made by the descendants of Shire. And it came to pass that when Enoch arrived, he prayed earnest prayers to God. And he placed his staff into the soft ground, and he tied the urim upon it. And thus, when the first rays of the sun for the new year fell upon the land, they shone forth upon the urim, and the eyes of Enoch entered into the mist of the three tongues of fire in the presence of God. And Enoch said, O Lord God, please may I see the doings of those who lived in ancient times, so that I may come to understanding. And it came to pass that Enoch beheld all the doings of men from ancient times until his own day, through the eyes of God, and that which he saw brought him great understanding, and he beheld things that in his heart he did not know. And he was taught by the watchers who are called Ebedel, and Kabodiel, and Ratkatsel, but he did not know their names. And he saw the conditions among those of old time, when mankind first left Eden, and began to multiply and spread themselves out upon the earth. And he saw that in the beginning, even after Kine killed Mataniah, his brother, whom Kine named Abel, that all people were of a mild and quiet and of a patient nature. And all the people were this way, so even were the wicked, for this was all any man knew from the example of their old father, Yatsikot. And mildness and quietness and patience were so much a part of the created nature of man that it took many years for sin to change it. And Enoch saw that it was after this manner until the days of Lamech, the seventh from Yatsikot through Kene, and even in their wickedness, no man was rude before the God of heaven. And it was not until the days of Lamech that men became rude with their violence and loud noises and impatient acts. And when Enoch beheld these things, he was amazed, for all he had ever known among the wicked was boisterous disregard for the need of reverence in the sight of God. And Enoch became awakened to a knowledge of his forefathers, and he saw how quick the wicked were to follow after the ways of Lamech. And it came to pass that Enoch saw that before Lamech, there was no man lifting up his hand to shed blood. And the murder performed by Kenneth against his brother Mataniah was accomplished without the shedding of blood, for it was a stone of Asael that hit Mataniah in his forehead when he was tending his sheep in the valley of Simcha. Reference number 4.1 Simca means Valley of Joy. See Strong's number 8057. And they named it this because it was where Yatsikot and Hava first met. After the death of Mataniah, they named it the Valley of Yoash, which means the Valley of Despair and Hopelessness. And Kenan did not have to raise his hand against his brother to perform it, but it was done because he was jealous of his brother in his desires for Sephi, the wife of his brother. And thus he corrupted his marriage in so much 
that he was able to enter into a covenant with Semehaza, and he learned in what manner to perform it from him, and it was all to be done in secret. And Kenna said, Now I am the master of secret devices. Reference number 4-2. Strong's number 2796. Because I know the way to accomplish it. And Kenneth performed the murder with hateful chantings and doleful murmurings and with the wicked desires which he applied to his prayers. And Kenneth had been deceived by the evil one into believing the thoughts of his heart and the sounds of his lips that were done in secret could not be known. And he was told that when Mataniah was killed, he would be thought to have no part in it, seeing he was not near at the time. And Kenneth expected that it would all go well for him, and his acts would not become discovered, because of the covenant administered to him by Semehaza and Asael. And all of this was done in secret, so Kenneth could obtain the wife of Mataniah, and in the end he would have her twin sister also. But God knew, for he sees all things, and he was discovered in his wickedness, and he was called to account. And the Lord God told him that a cursing would come upon his seed after him, and he fled to the northwest of the land of Tawa, into the regions of Helia. And he came to the brook Hales, and the name Helia means to be very remote and removed beyond the horizon. And because of this, his children found themselves in the midst of the floods that would come. And the curse was that Kenny and all who sprang from him, who would not repent, would be swept off the earth, leaving no remnant forever. And when Kenny was named by his parents upon his birth, it was in reference to a reed, and his name meant to own or create, and it meant to save or redeem. Reference number 4-3. Strong's number 7070 and number 7069. And Enoch saw that Mozart, the decadent, named him Cain, which means to strike swiftly and to chant doleful sounds in relation to death. Reference number 44. Strong's number 7014 from number 7013 from number 6969. And thus Enoch beheld that since ancient times, names of people and places were changed from their first delightful meaning according to the sinful doings of those associated with them. And this custom persists throughout the earth to this day with righteous people who keep the sacredness of holy language. And it came to pass that Enoch beheld, starting with the seventh generation, that there began to be a complete separation between the righteous and the wicked. And this commenced at this time because God told Yahatzikad that he would no longer be a father to the wicked. But they had chosen their father, who was Kenne. And you will see that before the flood, all the wicked of the earth followed their father to possess all of the regions of Helia where the flood came. And it came to pass that Enoch said, Lord, show me these things, for I desire to know how this great division came into being. And I want to understand this great mystery, for it is the desire of my heart. And as Enoch stood looking with Urim, he saw Lamech digging in order to bring water to the plants that fed him. And he was fat and unkept and lazy. And in the beginning, the name Lamech meant the one who is righteous, for he cooks without a fire pot. And while he was digging, he discovered a small stone like a melon, and it was very heavy, and he held the stone, and he wondered why it was so heavy, and it was a stone of Asael, reference number four or five, a meteorite. And when he held it, the feelings of Asael and his presence came in upon Lamech heavily, and the spirit of Asael drew near, and he said to Lamech, dash it upon a stone. And Lamech obeyed the voice that he heard, and he lifted the stone up high, and he dashed it upon a stone. And when he did so, a crust of stone broke away from covering it, and inside he could see a lump of metal, and parts of it shone forth in the light of the sun. And Asael said, Cast it into the fire. And again Lamech obeyed the voice of Asael, and he cast it into the fire, and he made the fire very hot. And it came to pass that when the fire died down, the metal of Asael was found to be glowing red, 
as a lump in the coals. And Asael said, Pound upon it. And it came to pass that Lamech obeyed the third time, and he rolled the lump out of the fire. And he took up a stone, and he smote upon it. And when he did this, he saw that it was soft, and that he could shape it. And as Lamech did this, his delight began to grow, because he now would be glorified by his fellows, because he had this fine new possession. And he began to be lifted up in his mind before his fellows. And because Lamech brought these things, Asael was able to bring up in his mind a vision of a dagger, which was the first human weapon of violence. And Asael said, Make it this way. And Lamech obeyed, as he could see clearly the shape of the weapon. And it came to pass that Lamech heated and pounded upon the lump of Asael until it resembled the one in his vision. And it was a curved dagger that could be sharpened on both edges. And Asael said, Put on it a horn for a handle. And Lamech obeyed all things that Asael was teaching him, and horns feels to stab or gore. Reference number 4-6. Strong's number 7160. And he placed a horn upon the blade for a handle. And Asael said, Rub upon it to make it very sharp. And Lamech found a piece of sandy stone, and using water he rubbed upon it until it was very sharp. And Lamech took great delight in that which his hands had made, and it became his most prized possession. And Asael spoke to him for the seventh time, and he said, Take it into your bosom. And upon hearing this, Lamech made a pocket so he could hide the knife beneath his garments, over his heart, and in this way, Lamech sevened himself with a stone of Asael. And Lamech said, Now I am Master Karash. And thus he intervened with his agency to enlarge upon the secret devices of Cain. And it was with this knife that Lamech raised his hand in violence to shed the blood of his son. And Enoch saw that after Lamech had fashioned the knife, Semahaza was filled with delight. And he said to Lamech, now you will be seen to have great honor among men, and all the men of your brethren will envy you for the knife. But in the end it was found that Semehaza lied, for the name Lamech now means to be without a brother, because he was rejected and despised for slaying his own son. And all of the mothers of the Nephilim hated him, as did all those of his house. And thus we see that the stones of the earth contended to see who would preside over the lives of men, and Asael would have prevailed had it not been for the flood. But the Lord is faithful, and the stones of Ebedel, who were steadfast toward God, brought the urn in the midst of a pure fire and pure water. And those among Ebedel who rebelled and fell away together with one-third of the host of heaven brought a weapon using a filthy fire, and in the end they were subdued by filthy water. And you will see that in the end, at last, Asael and all of his several hosts will be subdued by fire because they brought filthy water. Now it had come to pass that when Enoch beheld that the knife had been held in a pocket over the heart of Lamech in the same manner as he carried the urn, Enoch exclaimed to God his astonishment and he said, How is this so, Lord? And the Lord said that all the religions of the world would issue forth from these two stones. For there is, say, two religions only. One is drawn to the light of truth, and the other loves violence and darkness. And all the righteous need to give diligent heed. And the Lord said, Look and see with me how all of this began. And it came to pass that Enoch looked, and he saw the birth of two identical twin girls. And they were the daughters of Hava. And they came during the seventh time she gave birth, and he saw that they were the first twins to be born upon the earth and the first to look exactly alike. And Enoch knew that it was the custom among the ancients and of the righteous of his day to utter great prophecies over a child at their birth. And as he looked with Urim, he heard it declared that the visions of holiness for these two daughters would be one and the same, and they would be joined together forevermore and it would be as if they had the same standing before God. And the first girl to come forth was called Sephi, which is to say, the watchful one. Reference number 4-7. Strong's number 
25 from number 6822. And the other was called Azura, which is to say the helpful one. Reference number 48, Strong's number 5809. And it was said of Sephi that she would be the rib of one who is the gift of God, which was the meaning of the name of Mataniah. Reference number 49, Strong's number 4983. And this is the name the son of Yatsikot was called when he was born. But Kenne called him Abel to nullify this prophecy. And the name Abel means unsatisfactory and vain and empty and that he needs replaced as a son of Yatsikot. Reference number 50, Strong's number 1893 from number 1892. And because of this prophecy, every man knew that Sephi was to be the rib of Mataniah. And it came to pass that Kenny was jealous of Mataniah, for in his heart Semehazah had put the desire for more than one wife. And Semehazah deceived Kenny, for it was prophesied of him in his youth by his father that he would have a rib who was watchful to see with her eyes the things of God. And Semehazah thus whispered into the ears of Kenny that both Awan and Sephi had names that spoke of seeing. And Semehazah was able to do this because in his heart, Kenna desired that which would lead him to magnify the sins that were the way that Semehazah deceived his mother, or that is to say, he desired to have Sephi for himself because she was beautiful and exotic, she being of the first twins ever to be seen upon the earth. And in his heart, he supposed that because their visions of holiness were joined, he could, in the end, have them both. And Semehaza spoke to him often about it. And Kenny was wroth because it was prophesied that Sephi would be the wife of Mataniah. And he made vehement exclamations within the hearing of Awan. And at this time, Awan was already shown to be the wife of Kenny. And she beheld with sadness and sorrow the dismay of Kenny when he was denied Sephi. And it came to pass that she determined in her heart that she would win over the heart of Kenny. And the name Awan at first meant to watch with an eye of understanding. But she chose to magnify the feelings of the heart of Kenny in his jealousy. And her name came to mean to watch with an eye of jealousy. Reference number 51. Strong's number 5770. And it came to pass that in the course of those days, Kenny took Awan to wife, and Mataniah his brother took Sephi to wife. And Azura waited patiently for the Lord to bring her a husband, and Kenny was envious of Mataniah because of his wife Sephi, and he was suspicious that in the end Mataniah would have them both, and in this way he would be able to rise above the honor given to Kenny for being the only child of Yatsikah to be born in Eden. And Enoch saw that since the beginning, Semehazah taught men to place honor upon the firstborn. And he sought to establish that if a man should die, all of his possessions and his wife and children would go to his elder brother. And finally, with the life of Methuselah, he succeeded in establishing it. And Enoch saw that in this way, Asael worked with Semehazah from the beginning to prepare the way for him to have dominion over his own. And Asael taught weapons of war and the beautification of the bodies of women. And so it can be seen that starting with the first two men to walk upon the earth, Yatsukat and his son Kenny, there began to be a sharp division between the forces of good and evil. And it can be also seen that the nature of the kind of evils, especially the corruption of marriage, that were in the beginning would follow man all during the course of man upon the earth. And it came to pass that Enoch looked and he was moved in his wonderings as to how such a thing could be that the feelings of these two men could result in paths so divergent and go in ways as different as the daylight is from the dark night. And Enoch said to God, Lord, how can this great division come to affect all the peoples of the earth what force has been at work to perform this? Please show me these things. And the Lord again brought Awan up to view before the urn, and she was a person who was alive when Enoch was seeing this, 
but Enoch had never met her, and she was a very evil woman. Surrounded by strong forces of darkness, and her clothing bore the mark of it, for they were shredded upon the edges, and the herbs of the field that drew her bore witness of it also with their edges. And he saw that she indeed had been diligent to win over the heart of Kenneth. And during his whole life, he had no other wife but Awan, and he did not commit fornication. And Enoch saw how she was very diligent to support her husband in all of his evil ways. And her hair was filled with many braids, and it was unwashing. And she would magnify his jealousy and his pridefulness. And she would pacify Kenneth and direct his thoughts away toward another. So he would not think upon any thought that would lead to repentance. And Awan was a very vile woman who delighted in iniquity together with her husband. And Semehaza led her in all her ways. And of all of the daughters of Hava, had she been righteous, she would have been the most like her mother. But alas, she chose wickedness together with her husband, and they both seemed to be forever lost to a God of loving kindness. And Awan sought out ways to cause the domain of her husband to grow in Helia. And since the days of the murder of Mataniah, they had never entered the land of Moladeth, and the domain of Kine had the land of Towa as a boundary between these two lands. And evil people would be found to be drawn to the land of Towa, and if they loved wickedness when they were exposed to it, they felt free to spread out northward all around into the land of Helia. And thus the hardest of the wicked gathered into the regions of his domain, and wickedness there practiced and prospered, and most of the land of Helia lay downward. Reference number 5-2. Could this be the origin of the idea down to hell? Into the broad valleys that were there. And it came to pass that some people, when they came to the land of Towa, and they beheld the full extent of evil that was there, they shrank back and found ways to escape the people there. And Baraka had two daughters that thus escaped, as it has been written, and the people of Helia delighted in the new people who would come to the land of Towa, and they built them up with visions of grandeur, and they enticed them with subtleties, and offered to teach them in all the ways of wickedness, and thus there began to be a common mind as to how to proceed in the use of the element of wickedness, and concerning all their manner of worship, and the earth began to mourn in all the regions of the north countries. And it came to pass that Enoch saw that Zillah was the midwife for the Nephilim of Lamech by Adah, and it was she that Adah told how it was accomplished, and it was Zillah and Awan who caused the mothers of the Nephilim to submit themselves, for they told them stories of glory and greatness for any who bore one of the Nephilim. And Enoch saw that Zillah had a Nephilim child by the father of her husband's father, and he was called Mehujael. And he was smitten of God for his many fornications. Reference number 5-3. Strong's number 4232. Could this be the beginning of venereal diseases? I believe this is the first human disease upon the earth also. Up to this point, I have seen no disease in humans. And thus fornications were multiplied in the land of Helia, beginning in this same generation. And it came to pass that in answer to his question, Enoch saw and he beheld how some of the wicked among women since ancient times intervened with their agencies to magnify evil of their choosings in the hearts of their husbands. Now herein is a great mystery, for when a man knows the desires and intentions of God, he can intervene with his agency to see to it that the desires of God take place, and all the Erko de Shoi will obey him, then the will of God is done. And for him it is truly the intervention of his agency, because he learned and understands clearly, and then he chooses intelligently and knowingly to request and assert himself in righteousness that it become so. And women can do the same with God, but most often they intervene with their agencies in regard to the desires and intentions of their husbands. And they too, intelligently and knowingly, can choose to assert themselves to cause it to be so. And the Erko de Shoi will respond to them in this manner, 
because they view that a woman is taken out of a man, but man for this reason cannot intervene with his agency in regard to the desires of their wives in the same way. And thus for women, this becomes a very powerful force for either good or evil. And because the wicked chose this way, the feelings in the hearts of wicked men were made flesh by their women, by the power of the Darkar Darchoi, and there is no force in creation to oppose or resist them because for every man there is a rib, and the unpardonable sin is thus enlarged upon the earth, and it prospered in the lives of the men of the north. And thus it can be seen that wickedness was come to be magnified upon the earth in the seventh generation by the intervention of the agencies of men in their use of the element of wickedness and by the intervention of the agencies of women with regard to the feelings and desires of their husbands or the men around them. And it came to pass that Enoch was very sorrowful at the things he had seen. But the Lord God said, Look again and see the joy of the Lord. And Enoch began to see Yahatzikad and Hava and many people of holiness. And he saw the holiness of the heart of the first man and how Hava was the feelings of his heart made flesh. And Enoch began to see the holiness of women who chose the works of righteousness and repentance. And he beheld with joy the great faithfulness of his mother Hava. And Enoch beheld in her that which will be a benefit to all the righteous women upon the earth. For he saw and understood that Hava was very diligent to stand before God as the rib of her husband, or that is to say that she purposely stood as the feelings of his heart made flesh, and she would enlarge upon and magnify and expand the feelings of the heart of her husband in two important ways. For men enlarge upon and expand the feelings of the heart of God, and women do the same for the feelings of God in the hearts of their husbands. First, she would seek the word of God to her in her heart, so she could understand all of the hopes that her husband had in pursuit of their visions of holiness. For all righteous and holy men are filled with hopes concerning the fulfillment of the will of God in the earth and among the families of men. And for Yatsikot, all of his hopes were in the covenant of God made with him to see to it that all of his righteous children would someday return to Eden and be blessed by the wonders of the love of God he had known there. And you have seen that Hava acted decisively when she was sent of God on an errand to deliver Enoch alive, he being the last of the inheritance of Gabriel, and it was according to the name of God had given her husband. And she did not hesitate to embark upon a long journey in the night, and she did not measure the cost. And she was a great force behind all of the sweet anticipations in the lives of his righteous children. And she would make their visits pleasant. And she would uphold and support him in all of his hopes with regard to them. And she would believe in his hopes for them and speak of them often and make them her own. And when the forces of Semehazah would draw near and despair would descend upon him, she would only talk of how in the end, all of his hopes for them would come to pass, even as the Lord God had said. And she would always be found to be standing firmly by him if any attempt was made to make light of his hopes or cast a shadow of doubt on them. And she helped him to make all of his hopes and longings real by tempering the fanciful and enlarging upon the reality of the vision that God had for him according to the word of God to her in any given present moment. And secondly, Hava would support and uplift Yatsikad in all of his toils and sorrows and his desires. Reference number 5-4. Hopes point to the future. Desires point to the present. As he daily turned his strength towards building virtue and holiness in the lives of their loved ones, and she was truly a helpmate in his ability to understand as he sought to find healing and edification for his children who were the handiwork of the love of God. And she would assert herself to bring influence to see that the desires of her husband were understood by others. And Yasekad loved Hava because of this. And Enoch could see that she would become fixed in her determination 
to do all that she did according to the will of God. And she would not turn this way nor turn that way. But she was exceedingly diligent as she stood before God to see to the holy desires of the heart of her husband. And in all of her worship and prayers, those desires would become her petition before God in behalf of her husband. And as Enoch was thus marveling over the steadfastness of Hava, he began to see the waywardness of his father before he repented. And he saw the same profound diligence with his mother, and even more so, for she had to hold fast to the feelings that her husband ought to have had, rather than all those he held in his waywardness. And Enoch beheld the greatness of his mother in the eyes of God, and he wept for joy. And he saw that the faithfulness of his mother and the strength of her worship before God had brought his father into the very presence of God in his repentance. And the Erechodeshoi had obeyed the spirit of her holy worship, and they had brought healing herbs to him when he was left to die. And Enoch beheld that she accomplished bringing his father unto repentance with both her body and her spirit. For because she enlarged the feelings of the heart of Mahuya that he held in his vision of holiness, she was able to conceive Enoch, the man inscribed first among all men upon the earth. But as she magnified his feelings and desires and hopes in his waywardness, the vision of Enoch would have been lost to the great dismay of all of the hosts of heaven and God. And thus were the feelings of the first two men to find life upon the earth, magnified and enlarged, until in the seventh generation and in the days of Enoch, there commenced the complete separation between the righteous and the wicked. And it came to pass that Enoch saw that in the seventh generation, a change was taking place, and he heard God instruct him in his task as these events unfolded in the lives of men, and nothing like it had occurred before. For before the days of Zillah and Baraka, and the foundations which they laid building upon the works of others, there was no human concept of a collective religion, and there was no joining of minds toward worship. However, all the peoples of the earth worshipped, but they each worshipped according to their own wishes. In whatsoever manner they chose, but with Enoch and Lamech, by the hand of the women who surrounded them, and with the forces which they carried, either for good or for evil, there began to form concepts of religion, and there began to be collective opinions concerning worship that were felt to be necessary for the people as a whole. And this came about because of the inherent nature of evil to bring threat to the well-being of both the righteous and the wicked. The righteous were threatened with violence, and the wicked were threatened with the loss of power over their fellows. And also the righteous developed in this way because of the eternal nature of the goodness of God and the desirability to experience his presence that was needed to bless their children. And it came to pass that Enoch saw the manner that these great changes were to take place in the lives of men and among the watchers of heaven. And ceremony and the collective use of element began to show itself upon the earth, both among the righteous and the wicked. For with the wicked fornications and the shedding of blood increased, and religion was seen by them to be the means of maintaining the power they sought over their fellows and their enemies. But among the righteous, healings and great and marvelous works of salvation were manifesting themselves, and the hope of eating grew in the intensity of it, and to the righteous, religion was the means of accomplishing the will of God in his loving kindness in their daily lives. And it came to pass that as Enoch beheld these things, the Lord appeared before him as he looked with Urm, and the Lord said, Enoch, my son. And Enoch knelt upon his knees, and he said, Lord, here am I. And the Lord said, This day I have called you to perform a task for me. And Enoch listened carefully. I want you to put upon a stone with the instrument of engraving all that I will tell you, and I will reveal to you the manner of language in which it shall be written. And in this way, the stones of the earth will bear witness of the truth that comes to you from me for the sake of the righteous and perpetual generations. 
and I ask it so that I may establish holiness and worship among the righteous peoples of the earth, and I will reveal to you concerning all the watchers of heaven, for I have a task for you to perform concerning them. And Enoch said, I will do all of your bidding, O God. Will the people love me enough to listen? Will I be worthy of your errand? And the Lord loved Enoch and assured him that he would be near him to help him with all of the tasks. And thus the Lord made ready for righteousness and safety and effective worship to be enlarged among his people. But by Lamech, Semahaza enlarged fear and death among the wicked. And all of this wickedness began from the seed of evil in the heart of Kenan in his desires to have Sephi. And it came to pass after seeing all of these things, Enoch returned to the house of his mother and he rehearsed to his parents all that he had seen and heard as he stood before the urn. And Mahuya said, I have traveled much in the land of Toa, and I can tell you that all the Lord has said is true. And Lamech there is regarded as one of low esteem, and he is rejected by his brethren, so he was obliged to flee unto the land of Helia. But all of his works are magnified, and they are spreading to all parts of the north country, and the Nephilim wars there are becoming exceedingly fierce, and the inhabitants of whole villages are being consumed by the evil that is done in darkness. And I already see a movement among the righteous to desire a place of sanctuary and safety. And it came to pass that Enoch rested for a while before he returned to look with Urim. And during that time, the violent shedding of blood increased, and the doings of Lamech and Zillah and their fornications began to spread abroad among the wicked. And the people were obliged to choose which way they would go. And families were divided, and all the earth was in commotion. And it came to pass that some years passed in this manner, and the righteous from every quarter found that they must remove from among the wicked, and many had no place to go, and the land of Anak began to be seen by many as a place of refuge from all of these things, and the task that lay ahead for Enoch was great, and Enoch grew in his standing before God and man. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, Chapter 3. Shalom.